This has got to be the cleanest Jaguar XJ, Jeep, XJ, one of the XJs. Let's get started. All joking aside, this is a really nice 1999 Jeep Cherokee. Now it's not the Grand Cherokee, it's just the standard Cherokee. And the chassis designation on that is the XJ series. There's TJ, YJ, XJ, WJ, all kind of different Js. This one is an XJ. It has the four liter inline six and it is in very, very clean condition. It's in for the infamous death wobble that you're going on the highway 50, 60 miles an hour and the steering wheel takes control and you cannot stop it. It just, it's scary. It's actually very scary. Also, it has some oil leaks going on. It only has about 109,000, almost 110,000 miles on it, which is very low for these Jeeps. They can go literally three or 400 easily. Let's go ahead and take a look around this thing. Many of you have seen the face of these Jeep Cherokees. They literally made millions of them. In the 80s, the 90s, for even in the 2000s, they made so many of these XJs. They really are a great vehicle. This one's had aftermarket headlights installed. They're LED, you can definitely tell that. Maybe even the grill's been replaced, I'm not sure. But look at the paint, guys. It's a really pretty champagne gold, and it is in excellent, excellent shape. I don't know if it's repainted or if it's original paint, but regardless, it looks very, very nice. No rust holes, no dents, no scratches. Here on this side, you can see it has some Goodyear Wrangler trail terrains on it, and they look like to be in good shape, but we'll check the year date code here in a little bit and see just how old they are, or if they're old at all. So just like you just saw in my FJ video and the FJ Cruiser I just got, the door opens like a standard door. This way, this one would open upwards, kind of like a station wagon hatchback type of a door. I don't see any emblems in the back, Cherokee or anything like that. It leads me to believe it's probably been repainted, but they did a good job. Again, equally nice on this side. It's not caved in, beat up, rusted, or scratched down the sides. Let's go ahead and hop under the hood. And here is our legendary four liter inline six. Originates with AMC, American Motors Corporation. Chrysler Corporation bought out AMC and they did some changes to the engine. It's not exactly an AMC engine anymore, but it is very long lived. They have great low-end torque. They don't have a ton of high-end horsepower. That's not what they're made for. These are very tough engines. Easily 400,000 miles out of one of these. I've seen a lot of them with at least three. And they're easy to work on. The parts are cheap. It's not a nightmare to fix these. A lot of people want to put Hemi swaps and LS swaps in these, but I wouldn't do that. This is the engine to have. It can just lug along at low RPM and happily go up a trail without having to rev it. Really, really good engines. This one looks to be in good shape as well. There is some seepage going along the valve cover here just a little bit, but that's not going to be our oil leak. It's not even leaving past the cylinder head. We can see here it was bought new in Papa's New Britain, Connecticut. Dodge Jeep, Dodge Trucks, New England's largest. Maybe some of you guys live in that area. I don't even know if Papa's is still in business, or if it's not, maybe you remember it. So we've seen everything looks really, really nice. The interior is equally nice. It is very nice. Let's let Mrs. Whistler show you guys around, and you'll be in awe. Here we go, ladies and gents. He's right. It is almost at that 110,000 mark, 109,899 miles. And again, a very simple, analog dash, nothing fancy, turn that key off, save that battery, but nothing fancy going on there, just enough to make sure that we're not damaging the cars, we're going up and down a trail or run out of gas. That would suck. But as we slide up, this must have been stored in a garage, because she must be a garage princess. Nothing crazy going on, a bit of a cell phone holder there, suction cupped onto the windshield, so no damage, and put anything glued onto that dash, kept it nice and pristine. Then we come down to a nice vinyl, camel color as well. In our center section we'll see they have replaced the original radio for a JVC model. 
simple HVAC controls. As we move down to our gear selector, you'll see that it is an automatic and we can see there that is our selector to know which gate, which wheel drive we are in. Just like the FJ Cruiser, it is not an all wheel drive car. It is one you actually have to manually select which range you're driving in. As we move to the seats, they do have seat covers on the front and the back seats as well. I'm not sure if there is damage underneath them or if they're just trying to protect them. I'm almost wondering if they're just protecting them. With this few of miles, I doubt we have enough time to have had tears or rips put into the cloth seats underneath. Door card is also in really good shape. More of the black and the camel as well. And they do have black custom and stitched Jeep floor mats on all sides as well. No, no, the camera has not died. No, that is our black ceiling. Isn't that amazing? It's in really good shape. No sagging going on. It has some really cool speakers hanging down in the back as well. And it's in amazing shape. No marks. It, obviously, we can't tell with black as much. But other than a few personal effects, because it looks like, well, they were cold at some point. But Kansas is a little crazy on its weather. So they probably don't need it today. But again, door cards slide over there. They're looking good. Headliners, obviously, in great shape as well. And wow, what a blast from the past. Look at that garage door opener. That thing is even older than the car. It's shocking that that thing is still working, but maybe it's not used a whole lot because this thing is not putting too many miles on the garage door. It is being hid behind. As we move down, we'll come to our steering wheel. Simple controls there, nothing but cruise control because that's all there really was at that time. And other than a radio, there's not too many other creature comforts in this car because it is meant for the trail. It's not for cruising down the highway. Well, enough of this interior talk. Let's see what leaks we find on the underneath. So the first order of business on this is the death wobble, which is very dangerous and it can literally make you poo your pants. It is that scary. Maybe that's why they have seat covers. Maybe that's why. It could be numerous different things. I'm going to let you guys play the game. I'm going to list three items that it could be and you can let us know in the comments what you think it is. Is it A, loose ball joints? Is it B, a bad alignment? Or is it C, the Pittman arm? So the actual answer to that question is none of the above. It's the track bar, which is very common on these. Let's go ahead and check everything over on the front suspension to show you what we've checked. Then we'll come to the track bar and show you what I found there. So here we have a tie rod. We'll see if it's loose. Nothing there. We'll try a sway bar link. It's nice and tight. It does have four link little mounts here on the axle. That's not going to cause it to have a death wobble though. We do have a Pittman arm here that could be loose. We'll go ahead and test that. Nice and tight. This could also be a tie rod here that could be loose. Let's try that. Nothing. Let's try this tie rod in. Nothing. Sway bar link. Nope. I've already tested the ball joints when it was on the ground. They are in very good shape. Before we dive into the oil leak and move on our way back, let me grab Excalibur. It divides truth. It finds truth for me all the time. Are you ready for a sword battle? That looks like a really long flat screwdriver. It basically is. Let me show you guys what I found. So here's our track bar right there and it mounts to the frame on this little mount here. There's a little kind of like a ball joint inside of this and it locates the axle, all of the axle, from left to right. It keeps it from moving in this direction. If there's any play in this at all, it will allow the entire axle to shift back and forth. And we're not talking about five inches of play. We're talking about a quarter of an inch of play. And you get that moving really fast and it can be very scary. So this end looks pretty tight. Nothing going on there. 
But watch when I pry into this bar right here, this rubber bushing is pretty gummy. Look at that. Thank you Excalibur for revealing the truth. There's a rubber bushing inside of there and the actual rubber has turned into basically bubble gum. It's not firmly holding the location of the axle anymore. It's allowing quite a bit of shift back and forth. Another thing that can also cause this is a failed steering stabilizer, which is this white shock absorber looking thing right here. It doesn't look like it has failed. We'll definitely check it out, take it apart and see if it's weak. But it can also cause this as well. So based on everything else is nice and tight. I'm definitely going to say that the track bar bushing needs to be replaced. And very likely they sell it as a complete track bar. They may even sell an upgraded track bar that has a better bushing, everything already installed. And that might be the way to go as well. Let me put my sword away and then we'll continue on with the rest of the inspection. The next complaint the customer has is an oil leak. And the first thing I see right here is our oil pan gasket is all oily and wet. And it's not just the front area and it's also not the front main seal because I've gotten my borescope camera behind the pulley there and it's dry as a bone. It is only the oil pan gasket itself. Another place it's leaking, as we go back you can see the oil filter adapter which brings the oil filter to a 90 degree angle. That's wet against the block there that'll need a new o-ring or a new seal. And you can see the oil pan is also wet all the way back there. Our front suspension is good except for the track bar, the shocks are good. As we move our way back here, you can see the oil pan is just really making a mess back here. Check our U-joint here, everything looks good. You can see the oil from the oil pan is just basically spraying on the transmission. The transmission is fine, it's not leaking. Come back to our transfer case, it is nice and dry, everything's good to go there. I spy a double carden joint. Those never get lubed. You take these to a lube express place and they'll lube all kinds of things, but they never will lube the double carden joint. There's a special little fitting inside of there, a needle greaser will get in there and grease that. Here's our rear drive shaft. U joints feel good there. Here's our stock cat. No rust, it's got a nice coating on the bottom. A lot of these XJs are just rusted out by now. This one is in nice shape. Here's our rear axle. It's got drum brakes in the rear. I don't see any fluid coming out there. No real fluid coming out there. U-joint is good. Our shocks are nice and dry. No sway bars back here. And our differential is nice and dry. And here is our fuel tank. Everything is nice and dry there as well. Here's our receiver hitch that's been bolted on aftermarket. Let's go ahead and check the date code on these tires. And here we have first month, which is January of 2021. So they're just a couple years old. So these tires are good to go. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. So as you can see, this thing is in very clean shape. It needs some service here or there, some oil pan gasket, and maybe the track rod replaced or the bushing replaced. And really, the rest is in really good shape. These are a vehicle you can get for fairly cheap, but be wary, most of them have been off-roaded pretty hard. They've been beat on pretty hard. The whole bottom end could be completely rusted out. This doesn't have a frame like the FJ Cruiser or a Wrangler. The body is the frame. It's basically a unitized body. If that's rusted out, it could literally break in half. Lifting these or modifying them, customizing for off-road use is actually very cheap on these. It's very reasonable. I would really recommend an XJ because they're cheap to buy, cheap to modify. They last forever. They got excellent engines. I've actually had someone say, hey, I'm looking at getting one of the, uh, the older Jeep Commanders and modifying it for off-road. Is it reliable, Car Wizard? I'm like, no. No, it's not reliable. This is reliable. It's cheaper. It'll go further into the bush and come all the way back without being broke down. 
I wouldn't trust a Jeep Commander to do that. You remember the Jeep Commander we had, Mrs. Wizard? I hated that thing. Yes, I hated it too. It had bushings on the front differential that would go bad and cause it to clunk. It had a transfer case that was very finicky and it would start making chattering. It had chattering that would happen from the rear end. It had exhaust bolts on the exhaust manifolds that would break and it's almost engine out to change them out. And when it would rain, because the sunroof drains were clogged and also the seal around it was messed up, which we never fixed because we got rid of it not long after that. But when it would rain, it was literally raining on us inside the interior. And when all those things started piling up, I got a really bad taste in my mouth for the Jeep Commander. So I cannot recommend those. I would not take that deep into a trail 40 miles away from anywhere. I would not. These are also old enough, not this one. This one's in almost immaculate condition, but most of them are a little bit rough where if you take it out and you scratch the paint and put the streaks down the side from the branches and things, you're not gonna be too concerned about it. You can get out there and focus on having fun and not worry about damaging your paint or something like that. And like I said, when they do break, which any vehicle will break, these don't break the bank and they're not hard to work on. You could fix almost anything on this vehicle on the trail without any diagnostic laptops or computers or things like that. There's most things on here you could fix fairly, fairly easy. So we'll get these things fixed up and get this customer back on the road without the death wobble anymore. But before this thing left the shop, I definitely wanted to share with you guys this really nice XJ. It's been such a long time since I've seen one that's this nice. The ones that I used to work on in the past were usually dog piles. They were bad. This one is not. So if you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to fix the track bar and the oil pan gasket on this, all the tools we use in the shop are listed in our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.